In this video, we will study plurality and majority when we're talking about finding the winner of an election. Let's look at the plurality method. This is the method that you're probably most familiar with when thinking about regular elections that you hear about on the news. All we do is we add up the number of first place votes each candidate receives, and the candidate with the most first place votes is the winner. If that candidate received more than 50% of the votes, then we say that that candidate received a majority. But you don't have to get a majority in order to be the plurality winner. So let's look at a quick example. A plurality election was held with the results shown here. We were asked to determine the plurality winner and explain whether or not that candidate received a majority. Well, finding the plurality winner is easy. All we need to do is look and see which candidate received the most votes. In this case, we see that that's candidate C. Figuring out whether or not that candidate received a majority is also not too hard. What we need to do is find out how many total votes there were, and then figure out whether candidate C got more than 50% of those votes. So we're going to add up the total number of votes that each candidate got, 34 plus 29 plus 68 plus 12. We can punch that into our calculator and get 143. And if we take the amount of votes that C got and divide it by 143, what we see is that C received 44.8%, which is less than 50%, so that's not a majority. Let's look at a different way to study this kind of problem. Here, again, an election was held, and we're given the results below. But now we're given a voter profile. But we're still asked the same question. We're asked to figure out the plurality winner and to figure out whether or not that winner received a majority. So how do we interpret this information? Let's remember how to read a voter profile. In this row of the table, we have voters who ranked B in first place, C in second place, D in third place, and A in fourth place. But for plurality elections, all we care about are first place votes. So we're essentially going to ignore the rest of that preference order and just pay attention to which candidate got ranked in first place. So we'll add up the first place votes that each candidate got going down each row of the table. In the first row of the table, those voters liked A the best, so that's 17 first place votes for A. In the next row of the table, those voters liked B the best, so that's 11 first place votes for B. Eight first place votes for D five more first place votes for A, so that gives A a total of 22 first place votes, and then two more first place votes for D, so that gives D a total of 10 first place votes. Notice that none of the voters ranked C in first place, so that means C has zero first place votes. Now that we've got the first place vote totals, it's once again easy to figure out that A is the plurality winner, because again, all we have to do is find the candidate that received the most first place votes. Once again, if we want to find out whether or not A received a majority, we add up the total votes. In this case, it's 22 plus 11 plus 0 plus 10. Again, on our calculator, that gives us 43. Take A's total 22, divide it by the total 43, we get 51.2%. And since that's more than 50%, we know that A not only was the plurality winner, but also received a majority.